What's up, everyone, and welcome to the RRBG podcast. In this episode, I talk to the band Helgramites from Denver, Colorado. They have a new album coming out in June called I Am Omega. You can buy that at helgramitesmusic.com. Go check out the video they put out for the song Escargo, which is available now. For fans of Every Time I Die, Dillinger Escape Plan, or any of the Patton projects, we talked about them writing the album. We talked about how they met. For those of you that don't know, their drummer Bill and I used to be in a band together called Dissever. They shared some stories. We talked about psychedelics. We talked about mental health. We talked about the insane clown posse. It was a good time. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please make sure to follow them on social media at Helgramites Music on all the things. Click subscribe down there somewhere and hit the little bell button so you can get notifications when we have new videos. And check out our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash RRBG and support the podcast. Cheers. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I am here with my buddy Bill, Troy, Lehi, and Eric, the Helgramites. <laughs> Did I say that wrong? Lehi? Lehi? Lehi. It's Lehi. Lehi. It's cool, man. Lehi. That's how I said it at first, too. Yeah. Lehi. 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 Yeah. Sorry, my bad. No worries. There should, be two, there should be two E's there. There should be. <laughs> um... So you guys are a nude cabaret band, is this correct? That's right. Mm. Yeah, picture us naked. Picture you naked. Um, well, we, have, uh, to. we have tassels on still. Ooh. How are you guys doing? How, how are things in, in Denver? Is it still cold over there? Not today. It was nice it's spring. Today, it's all over it's the place. It's cooling off now that it's getting to be evening. But yeah, it was super sunny today. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, uh, you guys are getting ready to drop an album called i am omega is this your first debut album with bill in the band our first debut album period we've only put out like singles and eps before some seven inch split stuff like that but uh this is the first one for the band and since bill has joined the band for sure cool well for those that are watching and listening i would let everybody know bill there with the glasses uh with the bald head uh used to play drums in a band called Dissever where I sang for a while. Mm-hmm. And then he 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 betrayed my trust and left to Denver. And now he's cheating on me with you guys. That's, that's an interesting take. I'm just kidding. I think you moved first. <laughs> I did I did I did move first. <laughs> Actually Rue moved first. It's all his right. fault. Rue moved, you moved, I moved. Brian yep. is still in Miami. Brian is still in Miami. Uh, so tell me tell me how you guys met. How did you stumble across Mr. Bill here? And, and I'm sorry that you did. <laughs> Shady Craigslist. Yep. What? Was it Craigslist, Craigslist or was it drummer. Facebook? It was Craigslist initially. Oh, okay. Because yep. we were running ads in both Craigslist and Facebook. So. Oh, boy. I have had nothing but terrible things from Craigslist. It was yeah, dicey. Well, it still continues. So <laughs> we had one drummer. One drummer came in and, and just like played one little note. Tried to start playing a beat, and just kind of stopped. Got up and was like, "Sorry," and just left. It was really weird. So it got. We did get some really weird interactions from you know Craigslist and Facebook and stuff. So when Bill came in, it was it was pretty over after that. I don't feel like it took too long though. No. Yeah. No. no we were Thank really God. lucky. <laughs> it's like unheard of when i tell people we found him on the internet they're like what seriously man i've not gotten a sing. i mean i got a job from craigslist once and it was a, a nightmare and then i got roommates when i moved back from north carolina back to miami i got some roommates from craigslist and it was the worst they were up at four in the morning breaking things and it was a, a, again yes. a nightmare so i'm really glad you guys worked this out and uh we're able to come up with something good out of this yeah i had a craigslist roommate that would uh shit and eat snickers bars at the same time that's not a joke and that was his thing it was like mm. like was it. in the toilet at least no like he would be eating, yeah he'd be on the shitter and he'd be smoking too you know newports or whatever and he'd oh, just, like, eat a snickers take a shit smoke newports everybody it has takes... their shit task i don't know man that's wild the newport made it like minty <laughs> <laughs> it takes an extra special person to smoke cigarettes while shitting. It's a <laughs> Craigslist roomie. That's what that is. And Snicker. Didn't he have like yeah. a, a hatchet man tattoo? No, that was the other one that lived oh, in that ICP? same house, though. He had just got yeah. out of jail and he. Yeah. He, of, uh, course he he, of course he just got out of jail yep. with a hatchet man tattoo. <laughs> he picked up roadkill for a living. Bill, do you yeah. have a hatchet man tattoo? 
No, I do not, but I was a juggler for a little while. Yeah, I know you identified as a juggalo at one point. Recovering juggalo. Yeah, I'm a recovering juggalo. Uh, I was into the juggle addict. I, I had a couple of jokers. He had all the joker cards. cards. Yeah. yeah. Um, I painted my face, went to a, went to a juggalo event. The gathering? the gathering? Did you go to a gathering? No, no, no. Oh, shit. The gathering? Before the gathering was a thing. This is a... Uh, Great Malenko, the fourth record. Yeah, I had that record. Oh, so, all right, you see, oh, I wasn't shit. the only one. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. Uh, the one after that is when I stopped listening. Yeah, so our new record definitely has a lot of ICP influence in it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hip-hop and rap. A lot, and, a lot of that. Pro yeah. wrestling. Yeah, it's cool again, yeah right? especially the pro wrestling. All the lyrics are about questioning why mirrors work, so... Oh, yeah. magnets, magnets. Oh, no, sorry, it was magnets. Yeah, mag yeah, magnets. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Lehi, do you Ooh. have an effect on your vocals? Maybe. It sounds a little effecty, but it's fine. We might it be getting add, phase. It adds to the effects of uh, of the podcast. But so I'm going to read this out since you guys you sent me this over from conquest to inevitable and unavailable collapse. The stories and dark paths of humans seem to repeat themselves throughout history. In an honest perspective, Helgramites share their opinions and experiences of the modern reality through the music and lyrics of I Am Omega. So, what? Eric? <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying about ICP? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's what I think about yeah. when I think of ICP. Right. I think about all, all that. Totally. Um, yeah, so a lot of the music, um, well, I wrote all the lyrics, and um, they're basically observations of humanity um, and also sharing my personal struggles with, like, uh, giving up alcohol. I'm now three and a half years sober. Um, so that's a lot of theme, uh, throughout the lyrics, um, on the whole record, but, um, I touch on things, um, like badge fist, for example, um, talking about the negative effects of the slave trade and things like that on, on the world, um, and its impact today. So that's kind of, uh, something I guess that kind of references that blurb, I guess, cause I wrote that blurb. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's some that pretty record. deep thought for, you know, ICP inspired music, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, clearly. Um, yeah. But no. So, uh, so tell me what what drove you to that inspiration to uh, give up alcohol? I mean, everybody has their reasons, and if you're willing to talk about it, I'd like to hear it. Sure. Um, I um, it definitely brought out a very ugly side out of me, um, and. Um, I, I have a lot of great memories of, you know, sharing drinks and stuff with my, my comrades, my bandmates, family members, things like that. But, um, you know, it got to the point where I was drinking every single day, uh, crushing at least a six pack of beer every single night. Um, and, you know, on the weekends, overindulging and getting to the point where I'd black out and Oof. fucking get violent and do crazy shit. So... Yeah, well, that's, man. That's a good reason to stop. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So and I got arrested at my bachelor party. So Ooh. well, yeah. I mean, if, if I mean that's a, that sounds like a good bachelor party, but I uh, it, was a really, it was a really good bachelor party. <laughs> there's so video yeah, footage. there's yeah, there's video footage. Um, but what? yeah, I just obviously I uh, was making really poor choices and doing things that I wouldn't normally do and. It's bringing a really ugly side out of myself, so I decided it was the best thing for me and just my family and my band, just everything and everything in my life is a million times better since I gave that up. Um, still hard though. It's like I'm in a lot of settings where I want to drink, and I used to do it every day. And associating things like just having beers at practice is like, mm, yeah, you know, it's it's hard. It's hard. Uh, sitting there and being in there and not being able to I just function like as a normal person because I can't fucking control myself when I drink, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. Did you replace uh, the vice with anything? Like, because uh, what I've noticed is a lot of people when they quit drinking, the because the drinks have so much sugar, they end up eating a lot more sweets or oh, jumping into okay. soda or, or something like that. 
Um, nah, I mean, during the pandemic, when I first was put on like furlough um, at my job, I was eating a lot of junk food, but I mean, I've always smoked a lot of weed. <laughs> so oh, okay. if anything, my weed intake went up a bit, but um, so, but yeah, that's obviously super mellow and not in the same ballpark as alcohol at all, in my opinion, so. Sure, sure. I mean, well, it depends what type of weed you're smoking. Out here in California, sometimes, I swear, I have out-of-body experiences or pa extreme panic attacks. It depends on how much weed you smoke or what strain, I guess, you know? Yeah, we're doing dabs, man. Oh, God. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Fucking, you can't even function. No, I, I don't know how people, like, crying. <laughs> wake and dab. I just don't understand. It doesn't rhyme. Wake and dab, yeah, it doesn't work. Does there make one? Make one that that rhymes. Uh, dab and dash, almost. That's an alliteration that doesn't rhyme. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I heard, I heard a couple tracks. Um, Escargo. Hey, uh, that's our first Escargo. single. We're, we're dropping the video for that Tuesday. Okay. That was a shorter one, right? It was like two minutes, something yep. like that. One minute, yeah. Yeah, 147, yeah. 147. Um, really intense uh, time signature, you know, like obviously I expect that from Bill and knowing, right. you know, uh, and all, I mean, knowing from the songs I've heard from you guys in the past too, before, you know, Bill joined the band, but I think it's a good fit uh, overall just because it plays, it plays with a lot of experimental time signatures. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that and, how is it that you guys get together to write these songs and and you know make make it make sense? Yeah, I'll I'll will talk about that real quick. Because um, Eric says he does the lyrics, I do a lot of the music stuff initially, and then we all do it together. You know, and Troy does like all our video work and stuff like that too. And then you know, Bill's Bill, so we all kind of have our roles. But even with that song, Escargo specifically, like I demoed out just the basic ideas of it, and it was originally like a jazz song i was playing on an acoustic guitar and it almost had a swing to it and it was kind of like gypsy jazz and i was trying to like female vocals over it kind of have that feel so then it had this kind of weird constant quarter note thing going on through it so then i decided to try and convert it to like a heavier song to work with Helgramites. and um it's interesting because if you keep just the bpm going on through it it actually has this consistent quarter note groove no matter how it changes and if you can hear what bill's playing with that click in his ear when where it goes and how it gets wonky at times it's really it's just a fun little like uh tongue-in-cheek punk rock song because it's like jazz influences there's a definite head nod but it comes from an explicit like it's got that music circle style. pit feel too. and then that circle pit feel um so deceptively difficult, but simple enough and short and sweet. And then, you know, a gross name like Escargo. Like people, you think of like slimy snails or whatever. So that's what I did. And then I brought it to everyone and we kind of made it our own. And Eric wrote lyrics around that. And that was that. Yeah. yeah. I got really strong, you know, patent vibes from, from cool. just like, like, you know, Bungle or, or Faith No More and kind of vibes, which, you know. Again, I expect from Bill. Right. <laughs> yeah, and we get that comparison quite a bit. Yeah, I I think the uh, and the intro came about because because initially it just started off right yep. away. Da -na 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 -na. Yep. And then uh, I remember uh, we were working on the ending, and I was like, "What if we have an intro or yep. like we chop up that that time signature?" Because of course that's something I feel like I got to do. And then we yeah we like shifted what happens at the end of the song and that's how it intros it's the yeah. it's the same chord progression but a different <sighs> totally different feel definitely and then cody mcandrew did the synth solo over it he but he lives out of charlotte north carolina he plays he's a, just a musical genius he came in sat down and just shit out the coolest lead you could put over that part um yeah that's right really really cool really cool and i heard i also heard the other uh, lacquer Jacket? I'm at camp. Lacquer jacked. <laughs> Lacquer jacked. Jesus, I'm blind. Uh, Lacquer jacked. So that one's a little more straightforward, less, you know. Yep. Uh, but I feel like I've heard that song before. I mean, have you guys teased it? Or maybe I heard it when you guys did the live stream. That's exactly yeah, it. Yeah. A lot of these songs we put out on the live stream for sure. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so Troy I mean, shot and produced and all the puppet stuff that was involved with that. That was all Troy boy that did all that for sure. Oh, yeah. well tell me, tell me more about that. Uh, not the song, but that production that you put together with the puppets. Like how did that come to mind and what, what background do you have in that for, you know, getting puppets involved? Yeah. Well, it was actually his idea. He approached me one day. This was like mid pandemic or I guess towards the end when like the thought of shows was starting to arise. And he approached the, the idea because he had this fantasy of using puppets. I think that's been a thing of his for quite yeah, some time. I'm into puppets. It's, it's cool. I see weird puppets. We'll yeah. open it that up keeps, later. Yeah. I get clown puppets. <laughs> so the idea was to like rent out a venue because, you know, venues were struggling to stay open. So the idea was we kind of kill two birds with one stone. We're able to replenish money back to, you know, using the venues towards a, uh, a live video production, which we could stream as a live show for people that couldn't leave their house. And unfortunately, I feel like we kind of caught it at the tail end when shows were starting to happen again. So it didn't hit as hard. We a little, were a little slow to the, the draw on that, but uh, I think it's still a cool concept. We use the puppets to kind of be these like side elements that were happening during the show. Mm-hmm. So there'd be like a scene at the, at the bar or inside the pisser. Um, and it's kind of like segments in between, you know, there'd uh, be a couple songs and then we would cut away to this. And, and we did it with another band that, that actually opened the show. So it was kind of a, a cool hour long little live presentation. Now, did you go to school for that kind of stuff or yeah. just kind of winging it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a freelancer by trade. I'm, I gaff and, and, and I'm a cinematographer. Nice, 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 nice. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a great live stream. I mean, I'm kind of bummed that things are kind of okay. Let me rephrase that. I'm not bummed that things are going back to normal and that there are yeah. live shows. Yeah. But I wish that we could have kept going with having both elements. Like, why not both? You know? Yeah. Because why, why this- once the live shows came back, bands kind of gave up their 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 footing on doing that digital and went back to okay, let's play live again. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's the wave of the future still, man. I still stand by it that every band, if they're doing it right, should be streaming live, streaming rehearsals, going live whenever you can, and using video and that potential to be able to play live music in front of the world. Anyone who wants to tune in is huge. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so I agree with you, man. I'm bummed that it kind of everyone's now just trying to get back to the old get on the road and play as many shows as you can and it's wild well i mean i think there's room there to kind of do live streams while you're on the road i mean there's there's, yeah there's so much potential to to create more content for your fans i mean i hate saying content creation in the same sentence word in our fuck it it, it exists right like we have to deal with it the challenge is bands that are on the road it's hard to make the production value good enough to release it as like something that they're proud of maybe i don't know just have hate five six travel with you the whole time yeah Yeah, because it's it's, it takes a lot to do the the live stream thing and make it sound good and make it to where you're like all right we sound good enough to actually go live that's a good point because the first live stream we did at the beginning of the pandemic was a lot more diy in that we didn't have a lot more crew with us it was at a diy venue where we just depended on the audio engineer to mix for us while we went live on like facebook or something like that so it was there's a lot to it and it's a learning curve so i understand the path of least resistance is sometimes where musicians go and that's what's happening right now but it still does have potential to really change how people consume live music sure yeah Absolutely. And Bill, I saw videos of you singing while playing drums now, which is something you always brought up while we were practicing that you wanted to do and try. So yep. um, how do you, you know, how are you doing with that? How, what are you doing to, to kind of get better at it? Cause I know it's gotta be hard to think about singing while also thinking about all your individual limbs. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth limb is the vocal cords. I thought it was yeah. the dick. But... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I just regret I didn't do it sooner. A lot of it was just stage fright. It's weird. Um, you know, I could be behind the drum set and not care about who's watching, who's listening and actually the opposite. I want everybody to listen and watch, but the moment I'd open my voice, I'm like, no, I'm done. So, um, uh, I was in a cover band when I first moved out here and they needed backup and I needed money. So I was like, that like kind of pushed me. And then for, since then I've just, I haven't cared. And now I just like doing it. Um, 
some of the trickier parts, yeah, I just I just got to rehearse it way more than I would just the drumming part. So I like rehearse it uh, half some some of it I have to rehearse like at half speed to figure it out first. Like because I'm not writing it, you know, Eric's writing it, and then I have to figure out how oh, shit. How could I even do this part? So yeah, I'll, like I'll slow it down and try to figure it out. Now, when you when you're doing the screaming, since Eric's writing it, I mean, are you trying to go for a similar sound as, as his, or like, are you are you trying to like make your own voice so that it sounds unique, or are you just you know what are you trying to do there? I feel like it's a mix because on the record, it's uh, the blend is is mainly Eric. You can hear um, there's a couple guest spots and things like that, but I mean, I love like Greg from Tillinger is probably my favorite screamer, so I probably always pivot to that sound like unintentionally or intentionally. I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's other times that I try to just kind of emulate Eric. So I see. Now, when you when you guys are writing music, I, I'm always curious, uh, since you know, back when we were writing music, the only educated person was Bill. He was the only one that knew how to write music. Uh, and the rest of us were just like, yeah, that part just do 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 that, that part. You know? <laughs> Is that how you guys are writing, or how, yes. uh, are you all educated? <laughs> I, I, I think that's still effective. Like, do, 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 you know that part I'm talking about? You know, like right before the chorus goes, da, 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 da. Yeah, 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 we know that. But, yeah, no, you guys are like educated individuals. We're, we're all self taught except Bill. I'll, okay. Uh, right, right, but I think we all hold our own, I guess. And we learned the common language we have to speak to be able to communicate what we mean musically. So. Yeah, I mean, it's better than some musicians can say that have been, you know, you know, so classically trained or whatever. I think Anthony and Brian were like rare breeds where they would just not learn any theory and they would just do it. Whereas these guys do know theory. They um, they understand chords like I don't think Anthony still knows what chords are, <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. His ears amazing. So he yeah. never, doesn't need to know the lingo, um, but I just think, yeah, knowing the lingo helps. Sure. Sure. Now, Eric, uh, for, for your lyrics, I want to go back and dive a little bit into that. I mean, um, I am Omega and you mentioned um, all the struggles that humanity is going to. I know Bill and I both um, deal with a lot of psychedelic themes and have had our own, you know, explorations internally. Um, is that something that you play around with? Uh, I mean, how do you deal with mental health? I mean, because it, it, aside from, you know, your struggles with drinking and, and moving past that, there's a lot of shit going on. And, uh, yeah. and your music kind of expresses that in, in this, you know, it's kind of spastic, crazy sounding. It's not your standard music. You're not gonna, you're not gonna hear it on, you know, pop radio anytime soon. You know? What? <laughs> Damn it, dude! Yeah, sorry to break your hearts, but. Uh... Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. I I definitely the music is um huge release for me and being able to um I guess cope with mental health and things like that um the pandemic was really tough i think on everybody's mental health and um i think it strengthened me as a musician and i you know was able to write a lot of music and get a lot of gear and learn a lot of stuff about music um and i also build guitar pedals too so that's uh, another release for me it's something that i i do by myself and it kind of helps me kind of uh be in my own space and do something that I really enjoy that is not only used for, you know, us to play music and create uh, music, but also tons of musicians all over the world, really, because I've, I've sold pedals all over the place. So very cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. What's the plan then in terms of touring for this new album? Well, first of all, when does the album drop? I don't know if I have a release date. It's June 19th, 19th. That's the 19th. show. This isn't the album. The fourteenth. That Tuesday, the fourteenth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Damn. <laughs> so it drops it's June fourteenth, but we're having the album release show. Yeah. The 18th. We just last right. month shot a music video for S Cargo, and we yeah. wanted to have. Some, now I do hear that phasing on my microphone. That is weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, we just shot a video for it, and it's not quite done. We wanted to send you a copy so you could check it out. Um, but that drops next Tuesday, 419. Um, 
and then Lacquer Jack will be released next month, and then the full record June 14th. And then we hit the road um, for three weeks to try and sell some records and get people to give a shit about the record. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a Midwest tour, so kind of swinging up through the Midwest. Okay, okay. No West Coast states? Like, are you coming to L.A.? What's up? Not this round. So there's quadrants. We're doing one. We're doing like quadrant two. Quadrant four will be maybe next year or something. Okay. Well, if you need help, I got some uh, connections out here. If Where are you at? Uh, you're in La La Land down there? I am in La La Land, Hollywood. Getting crazy with it? That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the drugs and hookers and, you know, whatever Hollywood. <laughs> are mushrooms as big down there as they are up here? Everyone in Denver just eats mushrooms all the time now. It's great. Yeah, there's a term called California sober. <laughs> Does that mean what? Just mushrooms and weed or what? Yeah, just mushrooms <laughs> and weed. No drinking, just California sober. All right, I, like I just that. did a mushroom That's commercial really two days ago, That's actually. Kind of really? Right yeah, it's a, it's a mushroom milk alternative. It's actually a really cool concept. There you go. Is it psychedelic mushroom milk? Yeah. No. And yeah. It's a 70 year old uh, um, African American woman that is a spokesperson. So she's like, I don't know, just sells it really well. And, and the nice. fact that, you know, not everybody's doing psychedelics, but. There is the healthy alternative of mushrooms. I'll try that. That's a, so yeah, they a, have like gummies too. It's a based Yeah, milk. and then you got the mud water, which is like the coffee. Yeah, whatever, dude. Oh, that shit tastes awful, guys. <laughs> Good I mean, it. it's called mud water. You, yeah. Your expectations oh, would be kind of low. Trying to trip my balls off, dude. Let's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think YouTube keeps trying to sell that shit in their ads. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I try. I tried some of those mushroom coffee alternatives, and it just none of them taste good. They they also put too much like coconut oil, so it tastes like hair. Like it's just it's weird. It's like it's fucking almond. Why do we know what hair tastes like? And hair. All of us have eaten some hair. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) You said coconut oil, right? Like off a strand or like. Uh, it's like scalp, like, like scalp. <laughs> yeah. Some fucking dander. Yeah, some dander. Um, yeah, no, but yeah, mushrooms out here are thing. I mean, I, there's gummy mushrooms. Like this this company right here sends me some sometimes. Uh, microdose sure regimens. Cool. Um, but you know, yeah, it, it's 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 eventually going to become legal here. Like it has. I think Denver. Did Denver do yep. the medicinal? Denver County oh. decriminalized. Yeah. That's next. Is is dispensaries but it'll be a while i don't know if we i mean i I think as long as they control it properly because i mean experienced folks like us will be fine but there's a lot of people out there that are just gonna like eat a whole can of microdose gummies and then die they won't see them again (laughs) (laughs) they'll move to hawaii like some people have a complete ego death and yeah yeah so it was the other day that their teacher and that uh, jared our brother he used to be in helgramites actually Oh. He he said one of his students, he's a teacher now, uh, ate a hundred and ten gram cookie, like the whole thing, not knowing THC? that. It, yeah, not knowing it was a hundred and ten grams. So it's already happening now, where like these dumbass eighth, eighth graders are like eating. Well, that actually ha- happened to Jared too. She said at school, like her yeah, her skin turned green like a gecko, and she was just like vomiting everywhere at school. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's oh, terrible. Man. <laughs> that's, uh, so anyway, it happens. It's happening. Yeah, well, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I just I'm worried about it with with mushrooms, like uh, weed. You know, different. if you if you if you eat a, a lot of THC, yeah, you could have an out of body experience. I did. I mean, one of the last times Bill and I hung out, I went to Denver to see Opeth and Gojira at the Red Rocks, and I nice. had like almost a hundred and something. Like 175 milligrams. <laughs> <laughs> I was just floating around the venue. I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> Man, that was such a good show. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> such a good show. Yeah. yeah. Well, hope for the best. You know, plan for the worst. Of course. Yeah, Jira's going to be here with Deftones coming up here. I heard that their nice. bassist just quit. Yeah. They, yeah. Well, suck. more as a contract dispute. But yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, they announced the new guy is from um, Manson, right? he, Manson's group, Fred Sablin, I think it is. It, oh, it, they, really? Yeah, they oh, wow. had uh, T- Taylor Tyler Bates for a bit, but he kind of backed out. And then they, since he has connections with Manson, he brought in Sablin. But um, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. But, you know, it, at this point, the Deftones are this a machine. You know, they've got beers. They've got like nine beers with be- Belching Beaver. They've got... yeah weed box that they were selling uh, i mean they're they're becoming that kind of like that slipknot thing where it's a machine 
you know? Yep. The, the band members like really... You know, if it's not Chi, I don't think it matters to them anymore. Yeah, like, exactly. Who, who like, yeah, he's fucking is. dead, so any, yeah. nobody's going to replace that dude. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so so tell me, what would be a fantasy package for you guys to go on tour with if you wanted to, to like, put something together, like, three yeah. bands, three bands that you guys could go on tour with? Yeah, obligatory e right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, e got back together, back together and toured with us. Yeah. <laughs> um, do they have to be, yeah, do they have to be the band still? Uh, you know, yeah. Let's do that because let's go. They're, they're Eta just active. makes me sad. Yeah, Eta just right. makes me sad. Okay. What a, yeah, what a okay, sad let's break. Not talk about Eta. Maybe I'll throw glass jaw up then to try and lighten the mood. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Um, glass I've jaw. really been obsessed with the band Nails lately. I would love to play with them. Yeah, yeah. Eddie, we got to see them. They're oh, fucking sick. They're so good. Yeah. Yeah. So Nails. Who else? Glass jaw. And what was the other one? I mean, I got four at least. Like Go if it was a four bed, yeah. like of my own. I, Are we doing a festival or? <laughs> I mean, yeah. these aren't just snakes are touring again. That would be Ooh. top. Would be cool. Uh, Callus Dow or Dallas. Callus Dow boys. Fuck. Yes. Yeah, that would be dope. Yeah. yeah. And yeah be on the coast. Guys. If you do a little post hardcore, that'd be sick. And be on the coast would be fun. Um, um I really like the band, uh, Drain. Oh man, that'd be fun to play with too. Drain S T H with the ladies? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, just Drain. They're from Drain. California. So They're a hell, hardcore yeah. band. Okay, okay. Oh. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let me think. What's the if you were to have a guest on your album, one guest, who is it? So we did a different guest on every song on this album <laughs> and they were all friends of ours. So there are a lot of them are from the Denver area. So we definitely do believe in doing that. So if there was one, but so the next album we do one. But a celebrity have, guest or one? Yeah, celebrity guest. You only have enough money for one celebrity, celebrity guest. guest. Honestly, That's I would probably say like Kendrick Lamar, maybe or something like that. Seriously, <laughs> just really send it. Oh, dude, crazy. Yeah. just work with him on the arrangement of it and Dang let bro. help him uh, yeah. produce the song with us. And I think it would be something insane. I didn't see that, but you're totally right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very odd choice. I mean, I don't know how he would feel about working on that kind of music. He'd I mean, hate I don't know. It. He <laughs> would hate it, sure. Well, He'd hate me, actually. I know that for <laughs> Oh, I got to throw out one more band, Soul Glow. I would love to fucking I never heard a show of... with them. <laughs> okay. I, I don't even think I've heard that. I mean, when I hear Soul Glow, I think. Uh, yeah, I know. Like in America. I'm sure that's really good. Soul Glow. <laughs> what was that oh man i'm not i can't i'm blanking on his name what was it reggie jackson preacher or he wasn't a preacher reggie or... watson reggie watson <laughs> sexual chocolate <laughs> did you guys know that billy wanted me to sing uh the coming to america yeah the Sarah, yeah absolutely <laughs> that's cool Why i learned you? it but I, on, I just go, could, go i couldn't no give i couldn't i don't even give us the first bar <laughs> I don't even remember it. What was it? Uh, she is she's your my queen to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can't hit those notes anymore. My voice has gotten lower and lower. The more <laughs> podcasting I do and the more weed I smoke, yeah. my register keeps dropping. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Okay. So. Uh, you guys, I mean, Bill's got some other projects as well. Uh, do you guys other, do you, do you guys, you know, have other side projects you play with as well? Yes. Well, starting I, from left to right, go. Okay. <laughs> I, I played, uh, another band called Glass Human, fronted okay. by, uh, Emily Shreve. She's just an animal. Um, I play in a band called Valdez with Nate Valdez of a band called In the Whale. And I play in a band called Astral Planes, which is like a pop punk outfit. And then I have a band called My Blue Heart with my uh, my fiance. What you are a whore? <laughs> and uh, playing Helgramites. <laughs> I like puppets. I got four kids. It's crazy. <laughs> you have four kids? Yeah, dude. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, thirty. Five, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? They call me L L Leha, ladies love Leha. <laughs> what are you God. doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God! 
How do you have four kids in like seven bands? How do you have time for all of that? I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. It's all the meth. Yeah, it's I smoke a meth. lot of meth. <laughs> and it's Jeez. the ICP, too. Yeah. Just you know, my Lord and Savior, ICP. Go ahead and ahead. <laughs> we all have kids, though. We're all, we're all parents. A bunch of old farts making babies. My goodness. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, Eric, how about you? Do you have other projects that you're uh, in? Nothing serious. Um, I do a weekly uh, jam with my dad. Um, we hang out, play songs that we've written together. Um, but you're balls deep as one of the, you know, he has a reputation, especially in Denver as a, you know, great pedal, guitar pedal, tone master. Yeah, I build the pedals and I have two shops in town that carry, you know, pedals that I built. Um, um, but yeah, and I do a lot of cameos and stuff. Like if people ask me to record vocals on a track, I'll do that or um stuff like that but no, nothing necessarily that i'm like writing seriously or doing aside from helgramites um when i play music by myself i tend to like make a bunch of loops and kind of just space out and not really make anything or produce anything tangible but still have a lot of fun doing it so <laughs> okay i mean so why the choice to go as to vocals as opposed to just being a guitar player since you like pedals and, and effects so much. I play guitar too. Um, I mean, and I've written some of the riffs in some of our earlier material. And actually some of the material from this record, I've, I've written some of the guitar work from yeah. as well. Um, but uh, as far as singing and playing, uh, the dynamic is not the same and the energy isn't the same as having nothing in my hands and being able to get in people's faces and you know be the front man at you know as they say or whatever but um i also do uh sing through um a bunch of effects and stuff so i like loop mm. parts and manipulate um stuff on the fly so um i still use guitar effect pedals like on my i have a pedal board for my vocals bigger than two actually bigger than the guitar it's like it's like an l shape right yeah a lot of time when yeah. people like when we're sound checking the sound guy a lot of time is like where's the other guitar and i'm like there isn't one it's my vocals it's inside me yeah yeah <laughs> exactly so, but yeah i do a lot of stuff with looping and uh just uh adding different reverbs and you know layers onto the vocals um on the fly uh delay um stuff like that but being able to control it myself you know at my feet and you know have it be on time and everything like the delay trails stuff like that you know they're on like tap tempos so i can stay locked in with the music and everything so that's uh you know i i, I used to try and do that you can build can attest i used to bring out a pedal board as well but it is such a nightmare to set up all of that and i just gave up at some point like no nah, whatever plug me in i'm good <laughs> it's insane yeah my board has evolved a lot and i mean the the one thing that i feel like that i run into sometimes which is frustrating is you know sometimes gear issues happen especially in shows it feels like that's when it always happens is like when you're on stage so um trying to troubleshoot that kind of stuff like really quickly while on stage is something that i've kind of tried to get uh better at i guess and i will say like that live video that we did all of the pedal work and effects that you hear in the vocals that's mm. all just taken straight from the board from eric's vocals that he does live he hands an Alex xlr we plugged it in and then that's it like cleaned it up eq wise and shit and that's it though so it's like his he has it dialed in i mean it's coming in it's a beautiful signal it's the right dbs you know his effects his game staging is on point and um it takes a lot of work you know and a lot of like know-how and figuring out and trial and error but it's really impressive it, as part of our live show to see him just doing his thing on that board and it sounds amazing it sounds clean crisp Mwah, it's Some beautiful scientist shit it's crazy <laughs> yeah it's like another instrument on top of for sure my vocals it's like son I, I like to call it sonic manipulation because i'm creating like loops and stuff and textures and like just adding it to what they're doing but not necessarily hmm. playing an instrument other than my voice i feel like you've been right. doing it forever too like even in broken silhouette i remember seeing you that was yeah. like dabbling. Obviously, you weren't to the point of making your own, but damn, that was like yeah. I've always like been pre nine eleven. That's crazy. 
some sort of looping. I've always been into yeah, doing shit with effects. I love pedals. I have fucking literally hundreds of pedals, and I've built hundreds, of, hundreds, and hundreds of pedals. So, um, yeah, I just I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we move on to Bill and, and Troy on, on the other projects, I wanted to ask you, Eric. Um, you've played some shows pa- uh, post pandemic. Uh, with the style of music you're doing and the style of your live show, like, have you found any trepidation or uh, panic when you know jumping into the crowd now? Does it feel different to you? No, no. no. I I feel like things have, at least here, very much started to feel a lot more normal recently. And being at shows and uh, a lot of the restrictions have been lifted and stuff. So. I am very healthy. I'm vaccinated times three and um, I'm very high immunity. So even if I do get sick, I don't feel like I'm putting myself or my family at risk necessarily. Um, But I mean, we have to, we have to build up immunities naturally and be around people. That's, I do feel that way. Um, I, and you know, naturally we have to get sick from each other to, for the, you know, our bodies to fight it to fight viruses and stuff like that so i don't feel like living in fear of that is going to benefit me and i don't know i think the scene agrees we played a show our last show you we know the most recent one. people were moshing dancing yeah. taking their shirts off getting sweaty with it i think yeah. i think it's you know yeah i think everyone yeah anyone that's going to come to our show they're, they're we're coming to fucking thrash so it's like yeah and if you do. want to sit in the back sit in the back that's cool but yeah. and if it's still concerning yeah. you can wear the n95s yeah, and it's nice because we played during the pandemic and people were wearing masks and they had to sit down and it was fucking weird it felt you know? terrible yeah it felt weird like now it feels it feels so good because yeah like lehigh said people were moshing and i like to get in in the pit if i can like i like to get in that shit so if anything it's like it gets me excited like i'm ready to let's do this <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. starting to get to that point i'm starting to feel feel normal again too but just you know like the first show i went to uh post pandemic was uh between the buried and me and i just oh, okay. remember walking up to the front of the the stage and i had enough room around me to where i was comfortable and then people started moshing and i just like nah i'm not ready and i just like r- ran away but now like now when i'm there i'm not i'm still not moshing because i'm 40 and everything hurts but uh I, yeah. I but i definitely don't feel that like fear of like oh somebody's sweating near me like get away you know yeah and i mean we played a show in Greeley, which is about an hour from denver um, and a, a couple of us got COVID up there. Everybody. You and I. It was a super spreader event. <laughs> yeah, we like went up there and got COVID. I, you know, Michelle got COVID. Yeah, it was everyone got COVID. But we knew the risk. You know, what I mean, that's yeah, the thing is, if you're risk. going to sh- live shows, you got to know the yeah, risk I mean, and for sure. you know, go on with your life. And I'm a ninja, yeah. man. I'm still not insane. It's insane. Yeah. So I mean, I got sick for a week, and yeah, it is what it is. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think I I haven't gotten sick since it started. I think I caught it before it started at Nam around January. Oh, I was hey, out- she went to Nam. I'll believe it. Yeah, I used to go. I mean, I used to go every year, but like the, that year, and it was I went and I, I was out for two weeks in bed, no sense of taste or smell, couldn't sleep, couldn't breathe, couldn't you know, I just constant coughing. So I'm like, that's got to be it. Yeah, sure, it wasn't just the Mara boys. It might have been, you know. <laughs> we were sharing a flask, so that was my thing too. Like I would go to Nam with a uh, a flask, and I would just give people shots. So super spreader. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. The alcohol's yeah. killing the virus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're good. Science. <laughs> and the whole bottom floor of Nam is is in in a nut to you know. I'm not trying to call it anything, but it's the whole bottom floor is all uh, imported petals from Asia. So, you know, you've got Chinese companies bringing in guitar pedals and, and electronics and everybody's flying in from other countries. It's It was like the super spreader event. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nam 2019 or whatever. You just had yeah. to be there. <laughs> All right. So so back to the question or not the question, but the, what we were saying, Bill, uh, you know, you've got Chew Through yep. that yep. I've, I've heard. What else do you got going on? Uh, that's it. Chew Through. That's it. And- 
I'm hurt. Yeah. That hurt my heart that you didn't say to sever, but that's fine. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> well, let's <laughs> that reunion. Don't you need no, we're, You got to finish up those vocal tracks. Yeah, we're definitely inactive at this point. Uh, but, you know, it, it, who knows? Maybe Furnace Fest will pay us a hefty sum uh, one day to, to get back together. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so, awesome. Some barely famous band from Miami. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, maybe he heard the guy who runs it. Maybe he knows who we are. It's Alabama. It's close enough to Florida. You never know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Troy, uh, how about you? Do you have pro uh, other projects? I do. It's Well, it's it's super new. We're talking like a month and a half, two months maybe. But we're to the point that we've gotten together enough. It was actually uh, Jeff, the, the guy who directed our, our most recent music video, him and the gaffer of that shoot, Zach, he's, he plays drums, and we just got together on a win to jam and um, actually have written two tracks now at this point and just kind of grown from there. You know what I mean? We don't know where it's going to go, but it's it's grooving and it's it's very different. Jeff has a band called Lion Tortoise, which is like a very prog metal band. Okay. So it's it's a mix of that and like funk. So funk? We all called. Do you have a name yet? No, we're not to that point. Yeah, I have some <laughs> suggestions. Okay. I'm just joking. <laughs> Throw one out there, improv one right now. Uh, I would say uh, Jizz Breaker. Ooh. <laughs> Is that a jawbreaker? Ooh. Jizz Breaker. Ooh. <laughs> I still pictured the hard candy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but with Jizz coming out of it. Right, in the center. <laughs> now, so do you have Troy as a do you you know gaffer and and working in in film and, and production and everything, is that uh, something you want to continue to pursue? Do you want music to take over and just you get away from that, or is is it still a passion of yours to kind of work in that? Well, music is actually what got me into film, so it's it's okay. always been a first. Um, and you know, where, where, who knows where this will, this tour will take us? We have high hopes. I mean, we're all in our 30s having kids and you know what i mean i think i feel like the the, the the fact that a core of us is family is is the reason why the band's lasted as long as it has and uh yeah so i i, I feel like if music would take off i would definitely put film on the back burner because it's, it's the same thing as music you can always revisit it at any time you know what i mean i've made connections and stuff that people do that a lot music and film are very connected so that kind of dance is is very common all right all right well i mean it's got to be tough you know especially oh, it is. <laughs> you, you know you're trying to keep food on the table and music doesn't really pay the bills like it, it even people that are at a mid level like still don't make enough money you know you look at bands like every time i die where they were still touring in a van like that's pretty wild you know yeah that's very true you have to be crafty and you and you know we talk about this all the time and troy touched on i don't know if you knew this but we hadn't mentioned it in this but we're all, we are all related except Bill. So we were all family. Troy and I are brothers. And then our other brother was the original drummer, and Eric's our cousin. Oh. Um, so so we've been playing together for a real long time. Um, How far back? I mean, when did you guys start playing with instruments as a, as a group, like, you know, as a family? We were, probably when we turned it, like, around our teenage years. You know, all of us were varying ages of 13-ish or something like that. I think I started probably. actually playing guitar when I was 15. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so somewhere around that time, we all started playing together, and um, yeah, it's like we talk about it all the time. Where it's like if we didn't, if we didn't absolutely love creating music, original music, shit that's not going to be played on the radio. You know, we, you have to love it to even do the little bit that we do as a band. I feel like so it's hard. You know, it's always it's always hard to find real world funding for any sort of artistic endeavor you know what i mean and that's always the challenge private funding public funding raising money for a tour earning it through merch creating content to increase engagement it's just like an yeah. cool thing. Jesus TikToks, Christ. bro TikToks. Yeah. that's where you gotta go quit your job but first you have to have fifty thousand dollars you know what i mean it's like all these yeah. un totally unrealistic things I love that from from people that are already successful and they come at you with that like oh well you got to quit your job and just dedicate yourself 100 percent to it it's like yeah and be homeless sure. yeah what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about yeah I need to pay my bills yeah what business school did you go to like what are you talking about <laughs> all you need is your parents on fr upfront capital some boomer shit yeah. oh just fuck it you know at my age ugh, it wasn't that hard get out of here yeah. dude what are you talking yeah. about well, you know, and for people that are watching and listening, you know, I know the story a bit, but I think it fits well, you know, the fact that you guys are family with Bill, because Bill was the same way. I mean, Bill, you know, people that you haven't said it, but you and Brian played music when, together since you were tiny as well. Yep. Yep. 
So you they have look that. alike. Yeah, yeah we, we look alike. Look a lot alike. A lot well, alike. now now they do They're because Bri- alike, no. now, yeah, now that he Brian's shaved the head. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you've been playing music as well since tiny, tiny. So that should show, and, and it shows through the the music when you hear it, the passion that you guys have. Because like you were saying, like you have to love it, and and that comes out in the music. Because you know you're not writing these cookie cutter songs to try and make a buck. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I think it's a great fit, man. I'm really happy for Bill. You know, I, I talk shit and make jokes and whatnot, but I, I feel listening to the music, I know the type of music Bill loves and, and to hear you guys mesh together so well, it really it really does make me happy and it fills my heart. Awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, I remember that shady Craigslist and like <laughs> that, that had, had the Spotify link. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I just started learning it then. I was like, yeah, I got to start. I got to fucking learn how to play this shit. Yeah. Yeah, and then awesome. I went and saw Chew Through the other night, and they fucking rule. You yeah, know? they rule. They're awesome. So good. <laughs> yeah, for people that are listening, it's Chew Through is more straightforward, punky, hardcore, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. There's like maybe one song that's in 7 8, and the rest <laughs> is straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Well, H- Hunger Mites is definitely a little more for people that are into experimental, you know, Every Time I Die, Dillinger, you know, patent projects, all that. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, you know, we're almost at an hour, which is usually what I what I do. So that, came, that went happened by pretty quickly. Um, right so you had to pull stuff. Yeah. Like, Man, I hope this doesn't get weird. He's got like pull information out of us and stuff. And, like, like, uh, like, what are you yes. wearing? Underneath no. that, sh- that those pants. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, Are you wearing sheath underwear? Uh, <laughs> I can get you a promo code. No, I have a pair of thieves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so okay. So where where do people go? What's the best place to go to listen to what you have already and keep an eye out for the new album I Am Omega when it comes out? Website. Yep. What website, bro? Jesus. Uh, have Hungermitesmusic.com. You not- <laughs> 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 the World Wide Web, dude. Yeah, that's yeah go to the interwebs. Oh. And it will send you to any other you know, streaming yeah. platform because we have all the hyperlinks Spotify, and all Instagram, that. Twitter. Hungermitesmusic.com, right? Hungermitesmusic.com. All right, all right, all right. And, and on the socials, I mean, do you guys have a TikTok? Yep. yep. <laughs> We're on the we talk. We're You're on, on the, the talk. talk dude. We're I was joking. We're pop locking on the talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, the we first... all do twerk videos. <laughs> we do the guest the drummer TikToks. Um, Phil's the best twerker out of all of us. I know. I've seen it. We're on, we're, we're on Instagram. We're on all that stuff. Not Snapchat anymore. We retired that. Oh, did that okay? So I'm old and I don't really keep up with it. So Snapchat is that really like it's dying, right? Nobody it's uses that shit. It's a thing. It's a thing. We we have one, but we like don't ever use it. It's more of a messaging service at this point. People use it to text and stuff. It's just I've, and dirty photos. Yeah. Usually when we have photos. like a flyer for a show, I'll like go in there and post it in our story, and that's like literally all we use it for. Hmm. Okay, and I, I know Twitter's on its way out too. Everybody's wanting to boycott it because Elon tar- Musk wants to buy it. Time. it gets, it's depressing when you go on Twitter. It's Everyone's toxic. Just, I never even that it's it's more toxic than Facebook. And, yeah, it's toxic and it's ugh. most most That's, of the yeah. internet is toxic. Almost all That's of it, true. except for yeah. you know. next generation. I think my favorite too. of the the social media platforms would be Instagram because you get mainly a picture and usually there's a caption, but you don't really have to read it if you don't want to. It's like yeah, most people on. don't. Yeah, it's it's just for the pictures, and I like that. It's yeah. cool. So that's for for your Instagram. That's what at Helgramites Music as well. Yep. yep, yep. Everything's either at Helgramites or at Helgramites Music. There's another Helgramites that's from the East Coast. Fuck them. Don't follow them. <laughs> There's also all the fly fishing bullshit. <laughs> They're really cool. Yeah, really you can, nice. You're going to find a lot of fly fishing if you just you look at You can get it down a very dark hole of fly fishing if you're not careful. <laughs> I think there's actually two other bands called Helgramites out there. One's like a bluegrass band, and another one's a punk band. But yeah. neither of them are really doing anything relevant, I guess. So Yeah. So it's our band name. Yeah. But they've mistakenly we'll tagged us. us. Like, their fans will mistakenly tag We've us sometimes. We've been tagged in the, yeah, a few of their pages. <laughs> like, the funniest is the Bluegrass Band, because it's like... I think the ta- the Bait and Tackle was the best tag we got, though. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah, the Bait and Tackle. Because so, Helgramites are used for, like, bass fishing and shit uh, like that. 
<laughs> That's what I was going to ask. I'm like, what is it? Because I'm not. Our, gr- our grandpa used to call us that when we were kids. You little fucking Algarvice bubble or a grandma. It so looked rather, like yeah. fucking underwater millipedes, though. Yeah. yeah. Gnarly looking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I yeah, think I've seen a white fever is- dream bugs. Yeah. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, they're right. gross, dude. You Google Google Helgramites, you'll see a bunch of gnarly pictures pop up. But nothing about our band. <laughs> <laughs> Working on that. The the, so the, the trick the three on Google search. Yeah, the trick is put Helgramites band or Helgramites music, then but you'll get in, s- yeah. something. We should yep. start selling merch that's fish related, fishing related, like fly fishing rods and we just start yeah. Yeah. manufacturing yeah. our own lures. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the machine later with Defcon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the next step, guys. Don't worry. A fly fishing. <laughs> Actually, play a show in the middle of a pond while you're fly fishing and performing. Aren't all oh metalheads fly fishermen? <laughs> like, is that what <laughs> <laughs> oh shit alright guys so for those that are watching and listening follow uh, Helgramites at Helgramite Music go to HelgramiteMusic.com to, to listen to what they have now and keep an eye out when are the singles dropping you said next week we got the one uh, the escargot on Tuesday the music video and the spot and on streaming services yeah all right? streaming services and the music video are dropping Tuesday for escargos and then the album June what was the date 14th June 14th for the album I Am Omega Support the boys. Are you putting you're putting it out on vinyl? Yep. Yep. You guys got signed, right? Are you, you're on yeah, label. Sailor Records is putting the the vinyl out with us for us. Oh, um, look at Troy wearing the Sailor Records shirt. Yeah, I had to do a little bit of Sailor Records. They do their part. We do our part. Yeah, Steve's a, yeah. yeah, he's the best. So they're yeah, it's great. It's great. Does it's they have their own pressing plant? Because I know there's a crazy delay with vinyl plants. Everywhere. No, no but they, they have, have a Pirates Press. Yeah, they have a great relationship with Pirates Press, and we're we're expecting them here pretty quick, and they made it happen. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah, man, it's it's all it's all coming together. So hopefully it'll all it'll all work out. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we and uh, the- yeah, with all the bad lead times, we were like really worried about getting them in time for the tour. Mm-hmm. And you know, for our tentative release date, but we we're gonna have them in hand at the beginning of May. So um, pre-orders and all that are gonna be announced here coming up soon. So sweet, sweet man. And then the tour, you said Midwest. When does that start? June twenty third. Yep. Where does it start? Here. Yeah, Denver. we're playing Denver. Then we're hitting like some Colorado towns, and then heading to the Midwest. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, keep an eye out on the socials for all the dates and all the cities and make sure you come out and support. Thank you. Um, guys, thank you for coming on the show. Nice to Thanks meet you. Nice, yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you, Edgy. Right. Nice to meet you guys. I'm hoping to meet you in person and watch you guys live at some point here at the West Coast. Or yeah. maybe I'll make a trip out there for, for you know, uh, the beginning of the tour. We'll see. For the Red Rock show. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, or yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. You guys gonna play the Red Rocks? Oh God, that's on the <laughs> yeah, right. That's on the wish <laughs> that's, list, right? Yeah. But if there's another sick Red Rock show, you know, come out. Absolutely, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, cheers, everyone. Cheers, cheers. Later.